All right, guys, here we go again. Um, and I just kind of showed up to kind of walk over, make sure, all the, you know, most of the punch items were done. And so that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm kind of walking through. But I want you guys to look at this window right here. You look at this window. You see we have the flashing at the bottom. The, the flash is on both sides. And then we have the house wrap cut at an angle, the flashing up in there, and the house wrap pulled over, and then we have the tape on it. I gave my framers a course on this. We spent 30 minutes on this right here uh, prior to them um, installing the rest of them. And I want you guys to look at this right here. Look at the one right next to it. Look at what they did. They did it no different than what they do at any other house, which is wrong. This is not the correct way. And the reason it's not, because right here, if water's coming down from this house wrap, you can see, it, come down, it can get behind that flashing and cause that flashing to come loose when it won't do it right here because the flashing actually overlaps the house, the, um, the, the um, house wrap actually overlaps the flashing. And that's the reason that I had them to do it that way. And they came through and put all these windows up, so now they gotta undo, well, they, they did this one right. But the other ones up here, they gotta undo this right here and do it right. That's why it's critical for you guys. And here's the thing, those guys said they understood, they got it, and they was ready. They looked me right in my face, and what I realize is, although they say that, they don't really get it. Um, and that's why I sent the pictures to the guy who runs the framing crew and I said, hey man, I don't need you to teach it to him. Um, so this is what you have, guys. But a good thing about what's going on right now, guys, it's actually raining. We don't have the, um, we don't have the shingles on yet, but a good thing about this right here is that I can actually walk through here and see where my roofing problems are gonna be. Just to make sure I address those things on the, you know, while my roof is up there. So we, we obviously got a leak right up here somewhere. That's in the attic part. And I kind of know where this other leak is coming in at. So we also have a leak on the front stoop, which I get that. Then we have a leak right here. And this leak right here is actually coming from the, um, it's coming from right up here, right up here somewhere. So, but here, here's the thing right here. This is less than a, this is like a less than a 2% slope. So you gotta have ice and water shield up in this area anyway. So that's gonna cut a lot of that out. So that's, that's gonna stop. Uh, but everything else guys, uh, we got a little right here. That's probably coming from right here. Uh, but man, this right here is what you wanna see. You know, I don't have any weird angles that I have to get into and put crickets in this house uh, to keep the leaks up. But guys, when I came out here, this house actually looks looked like a bomb went off in it. You know, I kind of cleaned up again. I had to, you know, guys, and I'll tell you what, keep cleaning your houses up. Keep cleaning them, keep cleaning them, and keep cleaning them. Uh, because you see things, you can see more and more things. So that right there is done. So those guys gotta, they gotta put that back up. Uh, what well, is right here? They gotta put the um, framing members back up on this because the rough opening was wrong there, but everything else, they pretty much done all the other little stuff I told them to do. Took care of that, took care of that, uh, took care of that. And everything is, um, we can go up here, they, you know. And I'm gonna tell you something, guys. The reason that I'm able to get these guys to come back out here and get on out here and knock this stuff out the way. Now, they're not here today because it's raining. Um, it's, you don't want to be out there trying to push windows in uh, with the rain. But one thing that you have to make sure that you have with your crews and all the crews that come in and do work for you, you got to make sure that you have, you know, that, that, that went all the way up. You got to make sure that you have leverage. You put that in. And where do you get your, they put handrails right here. So I, I really didn't ask for that, but that's okay. Um, but where leverage, put the door in, but leverage comes from them owing, you owing them money. So one thing they do understand is money, okay? Don't pay them until they get it right. I mean, you're not gonna, I mean, don't pay them the whole thing. Always hold money back on your subs, you know, just a percentage of it, until everything is done. 
because you don't want them to have to come back. You know, I, I tell you what, especially if you guys are out here trying to build houses on your own, that's why I don't have a problem with sharing a lot of information with you guys because it's really tough to get out here and become a contractor because, number one, uh, the subcontractors won't be loyal to you. Well, they won't be as loyal to you as they would be to me because I keep them busy all the time. I keep work coming in. So we got that up there. So we got to we gotta get that fire fire block right there. So they put that up there. It's a good thing. Um, and so you have to hold money back. That's the only thing I can think of. You can you hold money back just to make sure that they um, finish up. I mean, you know, and you know, um, you ain't gonna not pay them though. You know, that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to just say I'm not gonna pay you. I mean, I think a guy should be paid now. You know, like this right here. Uh, this is an example of guys when you install windows you need to make sure the windows are closed and locked before you put them in because now we can't close it so that means the window is it's not quite square in this opening so they got to come back and get that right you see this look <coughs> excuse me <coughs> saw this again it's little things like this that you got to make sure you pay attention to um like I said, all the windows, they need to put them in. The windows need to be closed when you put them in. You don't need to put them in. And, and then, you know, some, some of them like to put them in and open them up and put them in because they can work it from the inside. You, you can't do that. You got to work it from the outside. So make sure all this right here was done. Uh, make sure all my bracing was done correctly. Um, and even still, guys, I tell you what's going to happen is my MEP guys are going to come in and they're going to tear this house up again. And start gutting things and cutting holes in walls and things like that. And oh, another thing I had to do too, I had to go down here and check all my doors, just to make sure we got all our doors in, um, which we have everything. Uh, shout out to Tim Flynn with Southern Wonder Supply. Um, it's the first time I think I've always, well, I'm not gonna speak too soon until we get everything in, but this appears to be the first time everything showed up, okay? We got everything here. Um, got some more tape there. I get all this stuff fixed up. We got to get a dumpster out here too. So, I actually forgot what I was talking about. But yeah, make sure you always have leverage on your subcontractors. Now, like I said, Frank, the, um, the, the MEPs, Mechanical Electrical Plumbing, they're going to come back through here and they're going to cut holes everywhere. So then, when those guys are finished, my framers got to come back out here again to correct some of the problems that they created. Okay? That's why you got to hold some back. You know, I mean, I, I think I got it to the point where I could probably hold maybe a couple of thousand dollars. I actually owe them a couple of thousand dollars. So I, I just hold that back from them. And there you have it. All right, guys. And we out.